So it's almost been 10 years since your first EP and you guys have grown with like doing different things with different um, darker imagery, darker lyrics. So what changed and influenced that awesome decision to do that? Uh, well, I think that like when I was younger, my favorite uh, artist growing up was David Bowie. And uh, David Bowie was famous for kind of shape shifting and changing and evolving. And uh, it always seemed like a fun thing to do for me. Uh, when we were picking the name Creeper, it, uh, we picked it because it uh, it resembled like a series of children, like 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 a, like a horror books or something, like like a Stephen King range or something. You know, I thought I always thought that each album would be like a different story, a different tale, a different adventure, and um, and the idea was that we'd come up with a different narrative each time around and present a different uh, side of the band, and alongside each different uh, different narrative, you could do a whole different look and a different uh, a different sound for the band as well. So. It kind of came around that sort of way. Um, also, I think uh, when I was desperate to not be one of those bands that just get a sound when they're younger and then spend the rest of their career trying to chase that sound. Um, I, I, I always think it's kind of like sometimes a little depressing when you see some, someone famous for a song they wrote when they were, you know, in their early 20s and then they still, you know, you get, get to the end of their career and they're still trying to do that sound. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I felt like there was, uh, like, I love so much music and so much uh, different media uh i thought it was challenging and exciting to uh want to push forward and try and trying to break new ground each time around but it's it's been like kind of uh difficult sometimes because people get used to you being a certain way or really like one story and don't like another as much or really like your current story but then like the old ones it's it's kind of stuff you can't really change but uh but yeah that's kind of how that came about kind of uh we, we were referencing a lot of things that we liked when we were younger i think that's awesome. I think, I mean, your fans, like, I'm one of your fans, like, I love you guys. And I remember even listening to, like, VCR, and now it's, like, Cried to Heaven, and that is just two parallels in sound. and yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's great. Like, I'm loving you guys evolving and seeing what you're going to come out with next. And I'm sure the other fans would appreciate that as well, because it just shows how not only knowledgeable you guys are, but you can tell the narrative that you guys are trying to do and the stories, like you said, that's really interesting to hear. And I think that's really coming across. Well, thank you. Yeah, like I, I always feel like uh, like the, the records that we've already made kind of already exist in the world, you know, and you don't necessarily want someone just doing uh, doing laps at the same car park, you know, like you kind of want to want to push push forward and and you know the more we can give the more irrelevant it feels for you as a as a creative as well as you as, i'm sure it's like that for you or what you do the more you can make yourself feel attached to it and and who you are in that moment but uh the, the better and, and the, the better the thing is and the more excited you are the more you can you don't have to feign excitement because you are excited and it's amazing you know yeah yeah that's a really good point i mean you guys as well you're really mastering that like 80s goth the vampire sound i know you're really big fans of like sisters of mercy so did you use 80s horror films as inspiration for any of the songs or what you're doing in the new album uh, a lot of the, the the imagery was uh based upon well, this time around it actually was a lot more kind of cinematic influence than there was kind of literary stuff there was a like a like near dark uh that 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 film uh, like a uh, was one of the ones that we've used the most, I think. I think like the the kind of the current like stage costume I have is basically like a near dark cosplay. You know, it's a uh, really really on the nose there. But the Lost Boys, of course. Um, I think a lot of characters like uh, the character of Mercy is based from a few uh, horror films and franchises. So, uh, um, in Interview with the Vampire um, and uh, uh, Let the Right One In, um, like these these are kind of tropes. We a lot a lot of time people we kind of. Uh, we reference tropes and uh, and kind of uh, classic stuff uh, as much as we can, but those are the the main ones. It, it, more so than like um, kind of a, a, like a um, a Bela Lugosi or some someone who we obviously love, but like a, in, in this one, it's about it's it's about teenage vampire gang. So it kind of made sense to kind of riff on stuff that was a bit more uh, immediate and a bit more closer to our time time uh, frame. Yeah, I mean, definitely when you look at the aesthetics of you guys, I was like, Lost Boys, Lost Boys, I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys fit so well into the Lost Boys universe. Like, I just, it's it's so, it's so great. It's so great. So what's okay. your favourite, like, vampire horror film? Like, we touched on Lost Boys, of course, but what's your favourite? Oh, that's a difficult one. We watched uh, Salem's Lot not, not long ago. Um, nice. You know, there, there was a short, a short series, uh, it was like a, a couple of, different episodes for tv at first they come like come together to make a film but i love salem's lot we were talking about this the other day because it's got some of the scariest vampire scenes ever at the window that incredible scene that was oh, floating and in the kitchen 
just just a really really a beautiful film and really really genuinely scary i think that stuff's uh the stuff that really interests me like that that uh that kind of error of stuff so i'd probably say salem's law i think that's probably my favorite one that's a pretty good choice that's a really really good choice <laughs> i mean i'm really weird with vampire films because i'm obsessed with blade like if i could turn my oh yeah <laughs> turn my blade stuff like i that blade some people would argue it's not a horror film I'm like yes it is leave them alone, <laughs> leave them alone. <laughs> but yeah mine's mine's definitely blade <laughs> oh yeah like blade's great I, I remember when that came out I, my dad bringing it home from the from the video store when i was a kid it's such a great film and it's great soundtrack on that as well oh it's absolutely perfect <laughs> yeah so when he walks into like the vampire like disco if you like or whatever like the yeah rave. the blood rave yeah <laughs> oh my gosh like yes i want to be there <laughs> it's so, good. so with the album that's dropping from from now tomorrow friday the 13th i love the artwork because it's like gothic fallen angel fallen vampire renaissance like all these awesome things thrown into it so what was the story behind developing the picture or the artwork for the album well, uh, we we felt like we were making a really classic sounding record in terms of the influences we were referencing. And uh, that kind of felt, uh, you know, um, like when you pick up a record from your parents' record collection, I kind of felt like it felt like something like that because we were, I suppose, we were referencing a lot of 80s music. Um, but uh, in, a, in a way that like a, a, a really classic record like Rumours or something, complete with Mac or, or like, oh, uh, Bat Out of Hell, um, uh, like Bat hey. Out of Hell like, has that, that classic cover, like something like that feels larger than life and, and uh, doesn't necessarily feel like a pastiche of something from another time, but like feels familiar in a, in a, in a sense, but, um, but uh, yeah, it makes you, um, uh, but, but some, but, but it's new to you as well. That was kind of the idea. And the idea I thought would be cool because we were using a lot of more cartoony artwork on t-shirts and, and sleeves and things um, was to have something painted. And so we found this amazing artist called Welder Wings um, who, who created it. I sent out a detailed brief about having, the character, um, uh, like a, a figure to represent Mercy, our character on the cover, and and kind of like a kind of a mood board really. And they just did incredible work. We worked with them to create it, and I, it's one of my favorite things about the record because it feels like an adventure before you even press press play. And that's kind of a, I think a lot of what we do and a lot of the um, the, the the work that goes into what we make. Um, is about getting all the small things right. But the name of the record, the, the way it looks, the way, it, uh, and, th and then you preps the listener to listen to it. And the, 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 that's kind of how the, the the journey. It helps you take you on a journey. That's always the kind of intent behind it, you know. Yeah, and with the album, the first track is just like a slap in the face, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, and it just it comes to in like a, a carry soundtrack or like an Exorcist soundtrack or like these really big anthemic and some moments in horror films and stuff it just like fits into that as well so like if you could think of a horror film that your album would like live on the soundtrack of or fit in that universe what film do you reckon it would be i, right. I tend to just say something by uh i mean tend to say something like by john carpenter or something you know but uh i don't know like it, it, it's difficult uh for, for that one because i think it, it, there's so many different uh sides to it i suppose um, it'd be tempting to, to, to choose one of these 80s uh, vampire films as well, but I don't know if that's the right thing. Um, have you ever seen uh, Monster Squad? I think it'll probably be something like that, something that that's like, because uh, that way you've got all the, the all the classic kind of universal monsters involved, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's it's kitschy and it's fun. I think the thing about our record is, though, even though it is scary, there's a lot of humour to it, mm -hmm. and... Uh, and I think Monster Squad has got some really great moments. Uh, so, and and it's kind of the best of everything, Monster Squad. You, it's kind of those kids up against all of the the monsters. So, uh, so yeah, I kind of probably probably pick something like that. I reckon. Oh, that would be awesome! I can imagine it in like a Three from Hell, like a Rob Zombie film or something. One of those <laughs> yeah. really, like awesome messed up moments. It's like the like oh yeah, it would be so good. <laughs> and talking about horror films, obviously a little bit more. What's your favorite horror film? That's a tricky one. Um, I don't know. Like, like uh, there's a, 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 a bulk of different ones that I that I like. Um, I suppose like uh, the classics kind of stick out. Like um, maybe like, like even like Bram Stoker's Dracula. I think it's oh. been a, a, like a big influence on me. It's a really sexy film, and uh, and you know Winona Ryder is is amazing in that film. And 
Uh, so um, perhaps that, you know, like uh, there's a, a great, it's not really a horror film, this other one, but it's uh, a film uh, called The Phantom of the Paradise by Brian De Palma. Uh, and it's like a musical, but like it's got this character that's kind of like the Phantom of the Opera, but he haunts this kind of um, music hall and and it's really quite scary in places but it's got this amazing song so maybe one of those two i think um that's what i'd pick you know you've got a subversive one i'm gonna have a more traditional one there, so. <laughs> <laughs> the second film you said i haven't seen that like the musical film i need to see that oh you'd love it it's uh, the phantom of the paradise it's got some really fantastic music in it um uh, it's one of my favorite films. So, like, influences are quite a lot of what we do uh so yeah it's, it's, you'd love that check it out Awesome, thanks. I'll watch that tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah. You spoke about like stories and the kind of journeys that you guys are going on musically. And this is like obviously your vampire story. Are we going to see more vampire story? Are we going to move on to like a different entity or something like that? Or are we going to see you guys do more vampire-esque stuff or... Well, uh, I think we're, like for the for the purposes of this record, we kind of we're doing we're definitely doing that. And it will keep us kind of ever changing in in, in its very nature. And, and we're a band that doesn't do it like a, a great deal. You know, we've been a band almost ten years now, but we've only made three records in that time. Uh, we we kind of not a very traditional band in that. Well, well no, sorry, we are a traditional band, um, and we're less of a contemporary act where there's a need to constantly release material. Um, so for with us, we, we, we scrutinize and spend ages working out each one. And, and when it's done, it's kind of a, a real event for us. So um, this is a very important day for uh, uh, tomorrow. That's why tomorrow is so important for us because it doesn't happen very often for us. Um, so I think we'll probably stick around while we're doing this one, at least it will, the, the narrative will stick exactly as it is, as opposed to what happens afterwards. Um, well, I couldn't say, yeah, you know, it's, um, we obviously have ideas, but um, it's, uh, everything is a process. And so it, it's, um, it, it, we we ha we're we're underway with, with with a lot of it, but it's not all completed yet. So it's kind of a bit a bit of a question mark there for the, for the time being. And that's good. Question marks sometimes are really really good. So that's great because <laughs> when you have a question mark, everything's a possibility, which is really exciting. So that's sick. That's good. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, that's sick. So what are you guys gonna do tomorrow? So obviously the album is coming out. How are you gonna celebrate? Are you gonna actually watch Friday the Thirteenth? <laughs> Please do. Oh well, yeah, I would love to, but unfortunately, I am going to be in uh, in Kingston. We we start we we go, we go on like a we, we a signing run. So tomorrow we play a, a, an acoustic show in a church in uh, I think it's called St Luke's. I keep forgetting, uh, and it's in, it's in Kingston. So we're going to be there, uh, and we're performing acoustically and signing some bits i think then on so the next week kind of goes saturday we're we're at in southampton at Van vanilla a record store signing and then we're doing a release show a matinee and an evening on sunday uh monday we are in um rough trade signing records and then rough trade in, in bristol signing records the next day then we're in manchester at the arndale hmb signing playing and uh and we have a vampire familiar as uh like like the, who's who's our you may know from the internet is <laughs> coming to uh and then we we end in leeds on thursday so uh, i'm away for a week just creeper 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 <laughs> my gosh and then in november you've got your tour haven't you as well coming up of course yeah, you must come. It, it, it'll, it'll be uh, we're so fun. We're we're doing a a, a really fun show. So it's uh, and we've got some great bands with us. We've got Save Face from New Jersey, and uh, we've got the, the Nightmares from South Wales. Oh no way! I I know the Nightmares. Yeah. So cool. Oh, I have to I have to try to come down. Yeah, just like you, my brain's been full of stuff. Like all I could think was up up to was Disneyland, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> And the last one for me, if you could suggest a horror film for people to check out or to watch one of your faves or one that you might even want to watch yourself, what would you suggest? Um, I would suggest uh, Brain Dead. Um, and like it's a, a really gory film. Like it was made. Um, uh, I think I think it was an eighties film. Uh, like there, there, there's two films. It's by Peter Jackson. There's there's a Bad Taste and Brain Dead. Brain Dead is like super gory, super. Uh, super horrible. I used to, used to watch it all the time. We you know when you're a kid and you first start drinking, and yeah, someone's parents are away, and you go around their house and you get really drunk and watch a film. So that was when the films I used to watch all the time. So I'd recommend that. 
Ooh, Brighton dead as drunk as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it was that time where you make a mix of all your parents, all, all, all the drinks in the liquor cab- cabinet, you know, and sit there and you'll pass yeah. it around. <laughs> yeah. One of my um, friends has a kid and it was something like an American show about taking a little bit of alcohol from each bottle. And I was like, yeah, yeah that's true. Like, we, yeah, we did used to do that. That is true. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 and it makes us horrible. I remember my mum having Baileys uh, when I was a kid and mixing it all the other stuff and it kind of curdled in the bottle oh, and how disgusting oh, that would gosh. be. And you just yeah, all drink it. I don't know how. That could be yeah. a 